Hi Everhouse, I'm Sophia, this is Matt, we are this, and we're here in our studio. This wasn't ever actually part of the plan. Things happened quite fast for us. Initially, we kind of wanted to find just a small corner where we could set up a pottery wheel. So we decided to find a garage just to make pieces there. No store, no nothing. It's just going to be a very simple space for us to create. One day we just found this place, which was much larger than what we had ever hoped for. We pretty much made the decision to rent the place on the spot. You think about something small not to upset yourself because if you dream big then you don't achieve it and then it's sad. So you start thinking about a small thing that's like achievable and you're like, oh yes, I did that. And then once you get there, you're like, oh, what am I going to do about it? <laughs> we had the challenge of now we have a retail space. The space was pretty much nothing when we came here. We still needed plaster, paint, plumbing work and we thought we were going to do it all ourselves. So one afternoon we came with bags of plaster and tools and a lot of motivation. We left five, six hours later completely demotivated, having just barely plastered the storeroom. Since I'm also an interior designer, I try to incorporate everything that I couldn't do before, but with, with a very limited, tiny budget that we had. So we started bargain shopping and some, some things actually dictated how things are here. For example, red tiles and we're like, hmm, I think it can, it can be something. And from that red, it started appearing everywhere. We have this blank wall and I was telling Matt, I was like, it looks a bit weird, bland. And we decided to do this big, massive neon. <laughs> then once we ordered it, we realized that it's nearly as tall as I am. And we had a bit of a panic attack as we were thinking, hmm, is this going to fit on that wall or no? But everything is perfect. <laughs> we both have our own different approaches, our own different methods. I work mostly on the potter's wheel, whereas Soph prefers to hand build. I sort of have to produce everything as a cylinder, but I also tend to gravitate more towards angular and geometric shapes. With me, since I work with my hands, nothing ever comes perfect. It's always a bit wonky. <laughs> and people love that, actually. They always come and they're like, can I have a wonky vase? And they'll be here. <laughs> they'll be waiting. I had this need for myself. That I need something organic. I need something that's not straight, perfect, parallel lines and everything matching with equal dimensions and everything. When you work with your hands, it just, it can never be perfect and you just have to appreciate the fact that it's not perfect and sometimes I'm actually sad when I'm making something and it comes so beautiful and I say to Matt, it's like, mm, doesn't, it doesn't look <laughs> as natural as I wanted it to look, it looks not as wonky as I wanted it. The brand itself, we kind of wanted it to seem a little bit whimsical, so it's got like a heavy Slavic folktale influence. You're getting all of the, the mushrooms, the frogs, but with the foil and modern materials. We need to be here. We're happy to do so. And the fact at the moment we're actually working on our Christmas collection. We really got tired of making just simple baubles. There used to be all of these little tiny figurines on the Christmas trees. It's going to feature a frog, it's going to feature hearts, it's going to feature mushrooms again. I'm dreaming about this to become a lot bigger. We are thinking of expanding the brand a bit more so we can sell internationally. I want to show us to other, other people and to give it a bit more exposure. Subscribe to the Everhouse channel by clicking on a logo to receive updates for our latest episodes. Check the link in the description for more from this.